All right, what's going on everybody? So it's been quite a while since we worked on the wagon project, but I finally have something to show you guys. So um, we just unboxed our brand new IEG Stage 2 Tough Block. Um, this is what I decided to go with, um, just for cost reasons, but this, this is basically how it comes when you get one of these. Um, they put the studs nicely in here for the lower end, and then they also come with some instructions and head gasket dowel pins. But other than that, it's pretty bare. Like it doesn't come with any of the block plugs or like the oil separator plate or the rear main seal or any of that stuff. So they actually sell this kit here. And so this is uh, basically all of that, that stuff you need. Um, oil separator plate, the uh, covers and all that stuff. So. It's like an extra hundred bucks, but <clears throat> you gotta pick up one of those. Um, I also got myself a set of these ARP head studs. So with these, I decided to go a little bit uh, <laughs> overboard just for, um, you know, reliability sake. Um, these are the ARP 625 um, head studs. So these are basically the top of the line. They're more than twice the cost of normal 2000 ARP head studs, but from everything I've seen, all the different builds I've seen, um, even like a stock or a regular ARP 2000 head stud will stretch and you can lift a head at higher boost levels. And so just as a safety precaution to try to keep this thing together, I decided to spend a little bit more money, uh, a lot more money, um, and get the nice studs. But we also got our heads back finally. So this was a very long process to get these. I mean, they were at the machine shop for a couple months, um, and then I had issues getting parts, and it was a, a big mess. It took me months and months to get these heads ready, but we finally got them done. These are the, uh, the heads off of the parts car that we parted out, the 05 STI. We did Kelford R99B cams. So these are their nice um, rally race cam. So this is basically a good mid-range power cam that should have enough lift for higher RPM, high power, you know, up to like 500, 600 horsepower, but has a nice mid-range that I'm looking for because it's not a drag car, it's a road car. So I want to have a nice mid-range punch, not have all the, all the power be above 5,000 RPM. So with these, it should be a nice, maybe, uh, I'm thinking probably around 4,000 RPM, maybe a little, like right, right around there is going to be where power comes in um, with the size of turbo we have kind of need to give it everything it can so we did all GSC valves so these heads are basically fully built now um, I did the Supertech alloy exhaust valves and their GSC um, stainless intake valves I think they're stainless um, so I did all new buckets the heads were completely rebuilt we checked everything uh, reline hone for the cams. These are also, also nice about the a little bit smaller. So these are like the 268, 264, uh, 264, 260 cam. With these, you don't actually have to clearance the um, the inside of the, by the buckets. Um, like on the 272s, you have to actually grind out um, little areas around there um, for the cam lobes to actually fit <laughs> in the casting. These, you don't have to do that. So that's really nice. Um, Makes it a little bit cheaper. So, even though these heads did cost me more than that shiny block over there, um, it's gonna be worth it. So, these are ready to go on. I got gaskets, I got head studs, we got a block. Um, but first, we gotta get started on this block, getting all the little pieces together. All right, so I'm gonna start with the rear main seal. I'm actually, this is my first time using this, but we just got this really fancy um, Company 23 um, rear main seal installer tool. So this thing's pretty cool. It should install this rear main seal perfectly every time because we can just bolt this thing on and pull it in completely even with these four bolts it comes with. So <clears throat> my first time using this thing, but it should be pretty, pretty easy and make this, make this go really quickly. Uh, Company 23 is pretty awesome. They make all kinds of specialty tools for all different Subaru engines and different things you could be doing. Um, things you don't even realize they, they make. Like they make stuff for single overhead cam, dual overhead cam, all kinds of things. So definitely uh, check them out. It's definitely worth it. 
Okay, so we got this thing set up. <clears throat> We're just gonna basically go like a turn or two at a time. And the star pattern and just slowly work this seal in here. You can almost turn these bolts by hand, it's really not even hard. You see it's just slowly working that seal in there. Remain seals are also a dry seal, so some people say to put oil on it, but <clears throat> that's not what Subaru says. Um, I've always put them in dry. Um, you can put a tiny bit of oil on the outside of it if you want to help it slide in, but the inside of it is a friction seal, and so it's supposed to actually use friction to seal itself against the crank. So if you grease that, you're, it's, not, it's most likely not going to seal. So, I mean, do what you want, but this is how Subaru says to do it. So. All right, now that that's completely flush with the engine, we should uh, take these guys back out and see how it looks. There you have it. Perfect rear main seal install every time. Perfectly even, can't go wrong. Definitely worth the 40 bucks or whatever that tool is. Uh, so definitely check out Company 23. They make some pretty awesome stuff. Okay, next I'm just gonna throw on the little wrist pin cover. This little guy just has an O-ring. It just goes in there like that. Should be pretty straightforward. Just pop this guy in the little, little groove there. Put these screws in. That one should be good, and then move on to the oil separator plate. There we go. Okay, so now we're gonna work on the block plugs. So these are the other wrist pin holes. They all come in these little gaskets. Um, this all comes in that kit. So this actually goes in here. These are just the access holes to get the wrist pins out um, during installation. So we'll go ahead, I think this is your, uh, a 10 millimeter Allen, I'm pretty sure. So we'll go ahead and pop all these guys in and torque them down. You don't always have to get brand new ones. You can reuse them for your old block, but you should always get new gaskets at least. Those down. And we're put in. So those are actually a 14 millimeter Allen head, but they don't have to be crazy tight. I'm just getting them tight. They're just to just to block off those those access holes. So next we need to do our oil separator plate. This is it comes with the updated part number. For all this this is a uh, new design from Subaru. Pretty self-explanatory. It was a kit. It comes with all these little Allen bolts. Um, there's only one specific bolt, and it's this one that comes pre loctited And this one goes in the one with the arrow on it. Um, I guess this one's known for vibrating and rattling itself out, so they give you one with Loctite, but the rest not really a problem. So this just kind of goes on here um, with some RTV. So we're going to clean up the surface. RTV, I always put RTV on the block. Then we just pop this guy on there and put our bolts in. All right, <clears throat> RTV should look something like that. I'm a big fan of this brand, the right stuff, RTV for stuff like this. Seems to be uh, really good at sealing oil. So I use it on all kinds of stuff. So now we'll just pop this guy on here. Use our little four millimeter Allen key bolts and tighten all these down. So with that all done, um, everything inside the bell housing should be good to go except for the clutch so we can go ahead and get it on the engine stand and start assembling the rest of it. Okay, we got it up here on the engine stand. Just put up, pop these little dowels in here. The head gaskets, it came with those which is nice. But yeah, you can see inside here the custom IEG I-beam rods and all ARP hardware. It's super nice. So. Just clean up the deck surface with some brake clean. I'm gonna make sure there's no oils on here whatsoever. Um, I am gonna copper spray the gaskets. I got um, all OEM gaskets, so that's oh, the OEM head gasket is plenty strong for for what we're doing. Um, we're not doing an O-ring block or anything crazy, so these will work just fine. 
So um, yeah, we get this thing cleaned up. We get the studs in there, kind of get things ready for the head to go on. Okay, so we got our heads all laid out. Um, we just had to take the cams out. All these buckets and everything, all the valve lash already set, so I had the machine shop do all that, so we're gonna try to leave them in their spots. Um, so I'm just following the ARP instructions here um, and how to torque these. Um, so I had to clean all the washers. These come with like this protective oil on them and it says this needs to be super clean. So clean the washers, clean the surfaces where they go. Just kind of laid everything out. All right, <clears throat> copper spray, our head gaskets. Just gives it a little bit extra tackiness. Do both sides. Okay, <clears throat> just rest that on there. And now I'm gonna set the cylinder head on top of the block here, and then I can thread my head studs in through the holes. Makes it a lot easier. All right, just got that rested on there. I just threaded the studs in. Um, you don't actually tighten these down at all. These are basically just threaded in until they bottom out inside the block because all the torque is meant to go on the nut, not these. So just got them threaded in there until they stop and just leave it. Um, now, according to our instructions, we can yeah, place the washers over on the dry spots because I cleaned everything so it's all dry. And then we'll put the assembly lubricant on the actual fasteners right here in those threads and stuff, so. Okay, so we got those all cinched down. So now we're gonna go through our torquing sequence. So we'll do one through six, 35, then 70 foot pounds, and then 100 foot pounds. Which uh, is quite a lot, but these are the, um, the CA625 Plus, so they're a little bit more torque than uh, the regular ARP head studs. Okay, so 100 foot pounds is a lot for head studs on one of these, so it's quite difficult, but we got it on. So now we can pop our cams back in, get our cam caps on there and torqued. Um, I had these all line honed, so everything's been checked. Um, we'll put some more assembly lube on it. But first we gotta clean up a bunch of this stuff um, and pop them in, because we do have to RTV the cam carrier in the front half here, so. Okay, so I got everything clean. I just put a nice little film of our TV through here. Got this side all clean. Put a bunch more uh, assembly lube on there. Uh, but make sure all this stuff has to be super clean with brake clean because our TV will not dry if it gets oil in it. <clears throat> okay, so we just rested that on there. Um, so we're gonna torque these. These are a little bit different than other motors, so. These are 14 and a half foot pounds, and then these up in the front here are seven foot pounds. And so we're gonna kind of start in the middle and work our way outward. Um, just, we kind of need one of these really nice torque wrenches to go this low, so just slowly make it weep. We'll just go around, get all these torqued. If you go too high on these, um, it's really important. If you put, tighten these too much, um, it actually will close the clearance 
of the cams and it will eat your cams alive on first startup. Uh, just shred them. So definitely make sure you have the right tools uh, to do this. All right, now that the cams are all torqued, we can go ahead and put our cam seals in. Um, so that I have this other really neat Company 23 tool. This is for um, dual overhead cam um, UJ25s. So I think this same tool will work on NA ones also, um, but it works for the non-AVCS cam gear as well as the AVCS one, because these are two different seals, so you can see. This one needs space for the ABCS pulley to go through. So, we should be able to just tighten this down, and pull this thing in, and make a perfect seal. So, there it is. So, that tool is really nice because it sets the the depth here and it also just makes sure it's perfectly even so ready to go okay so we got it flipped over we're gonna start the same process on the other side get both heads on all right skipping ahead a little bit put those on just threading in the head studs um, just copy sprayed that gasket same same deal as the first one so I'm just gonna Throw this one together. Okay, got those threaded in. So I just got my grease on the washer here inside the threads. That side's clean. So I'm gonna thread those in there. That way only the lube is on the top of the washer side and give us the best, most accurate torque spec. So okay. Now we're going to go through our torque sequence again, 35, uh, 70, and then 100. So, just go in order. There we go. And two. Keep going. Okay, got those all torqued. That's a lot of torque, very difficult. Um, but now we can go ahead and throw our cams in and start uh, getting everything assembled. All right, got all the RTV on here. Got it nice, nice and clean. So everything's perfect. Be able to just set this guy on here. It's got little dowels, so make sure those go in. And we'll put all our bolts back in. Okay, let's get all these torqued to 14 and a half, and these to seven. And so I personally like to go through and paint mark all the bolts after I torque them. This is a nice visual reminder that they're done. So this looks a lot nicer. So I know all those are done, good to go. Um, I don't actually have my half moons yet. I ordered some nice uh, aluminum ones um, just cause the OEM plastic ones are pretty expensive and you can get aluminum ones that are reusable for like $10 more. So. Once those come, I can put the actual valve covers on. Um, also, I haven't cleaned any of the valve covers, so they're still really dirty from the last engine. So I'm gonna take these, get them cleaned. I'm gonna sand them and paint them. Um, and I also need to take this. This is my uh, Killer Bee oil pan I got. Uh, my buddy gave me this. It was, I can't get it out, but it should all be there. Um, it was a takeoff from another car, so I need to clean it all out and to get all the RTV off and everything before we can put that on. But that's super nice because that ups my capacity to like six quarts. Um, has all the best baffling and everything in there, so I shouldn't have to worry about oil starvation, which is the main thing that kills Subarus. So 
Uh, yeah, let's get to these cam seals and then we can maybe move on to some of the stuff in the front. All right, well, there it is. Basically a full long block. I just used the Company 23 tool again to get those cam seals pushed in there. Perfect every time. So I think I'm gonna might throw on my oil pump and we'll call it good for today. Okay, I decided to throw my uh, TTV housings on. These are a set I picked up off Facebook Marketplace. These are for an 07. So 07 is the only year that was factory top feed injectors. So this will kind of get my get me away from getting one of those conversion kits or getting aftermarket housings. Um, these have been, just been deleted and ported. So these should be perfectly gasket matched to the ports. Like that nice clean airflow all the way in there. We got gasket on the bottom. Um, I just kind of chased the threads a little bit, cleaned up my bolts, and should be able to just kind of go in like that. I get these on. Once those are on, we can start working on the oil pump. All right, well, I started cleaning up the oil pump, getting this thing ready um, to put on, but I can't find the bolts for it. So I'm gonna have to do some digging and figure out how to find the bolts, but, but yeah, this is just a stock 11 mil OEM pump um, that was actually on my brother's car. Went in, um, but he really, he doesn't have ABCS or anything, so he went down to a 10 mil. So this would be perfect. This is what's supposed to be on this engine. So I think we're just gonna end this video here. Um, that's pretty much the long block anyway. Next time I wanna get the oil pan on, get that stuff set up, finalize the valve covers. I got the coolant crossover pipe here. I still need to paint strip the manifold, get this thing all ready to go. This thing is disgusting. So we're gonna repaint that, repaint the valve covers, get the oil pan on, coolant crossover pipe, get the start getting the intake and stuff ready, and then it's ready to start getting to, to the timing portion of it, um, which I don't have any of the timing components yet. Um, I have to replace everything, so it's quite expensive. So uh, we'll get to that when we get it, but, but for now, at least we have some progress. We have an engine. It's, uh, it's coming together. So thank you guys for watching. Um, we'll see you guys next time. If you have any comp, uh, questions or anything, put them in the comments. And uh, yeah, I'll see you later.